Is there anybody in the room or online that have a public comment before we start? I'm Hearing none. Aware. Yeah, I'm not aware of any online request to speak. Okay, and there's nobody else in the room? Just department heads. All right. Does anybody have any communications? for this evening, elders, directors, mayor, anybody? I guess my only communication uh, regarding the budget is, this is kind of a working document we're, we're doing right now. We've been awaiting um, some information from the state, from our insurance companies, um, and it's still trickling in. So you know th there'll be some updated numbers at next week's meetings they won't be dramatic but i wanted to let you know that there will be some updated numbers and dave will touch upon some of them as he goes through the presentation and the formatting will be a little bit different than you're used to in the past um, what we're trying to do is utilize our software system um, and the reports that they generate so we don't duplicate wor duplicate work because that's really not efficient use of time um, there's going to be as you know we've gone through the council and done a number of changes in some of the coding and things uh, so dave can get things uh, the way he's comfortable with moving forward so you know we believe that as we go through this this is going to be um, fluid and we'll be uh, working uh, closely with our department heads um, for additional uh, training on our BSNA system as well as um, some more uh, formatting and notes that we can include into future budgets so I just wanted to let you know up front that things will look a little bit different um, certainly as we go through them if there's any additional information you need we'll be happy to provide it or if there's um, you know things that'll make it easier for you to digest we certainly are open to that as well okay thank you i think the only thing that i saw that was that would be helpful is like um last year we had like graphs of showing previous years and current years budgets and expected and expenditures those were just nice visually but if they're too difficult or too time consuming to make then you know that's okay i can certainly uh, add that for next year but yeah in order to create all those graphs you have to download the data and then create it so uh, each graph 20 30 minutes oh well that's ridiculous so it's not like a simple Excel that you can just grab different uh, correct you have things. to create it every time and BSNA does have a uh, you could generate a graph if multiple funds are involved but uh, to be honest i think the graph is garbage because it just puts in dollar amounts of percentages that you'd have to add in the departments and everything else so it, it's almost like you have to start from scratch all right never mind then we That's could certainly so. start adding them as we go next year of course one of the things that I thought about is history is kind of a moot point right now because you've got pre-COVID, then COVID, then post-COVID. A lot of things are not consistent. You know, so the past history, it's great to look at, but you, it's not status quo by any means. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any communications? I have, I have what I, I hope is a general question, but I'm very curious about the software entries, and I don't know if it would be asking too much to get um, a, a better um, understanding of what kind of software is included in our software costs, particularly um, something you know, like, like SurveyMonkey, which is expensive and can be easily done with free software. Okay. And John, feel free to chime in. I know John, on his Excel spreadsheets, has 
the detail of the software oh, okay. packages that he's purchasing. And the intent is for next year, and I'll be showing the department heads how to do this, you can actually enter that line by line detail for each account if you want to, and then the system adds it up in total. So then when we are printing the reports, they automatically print too. Okay, that sounds, that sounds great. I think that would be um, helpful as an inventory as, as things change. They, they tend to change quickly in John's world, so um, maybe that would be helpful. Uh, we can work on that together. He's already shaking his head yes. <laughs> any other questions? Any other, any other communications? All right. Dave, we move on to reports. I don't see the minutes. To approve the minutes from last time, I don't see that on the agenda. Um, oh, we do, uh, it's number six, so. Yeah. So we can do, go uh, with your reports now. Well, I guess personal opinion, I do the minutes first and then get into the reports. Okay, well, let's switch it around. So let's do the approval of October 20th, 2021, Committee of the Whole Minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Anybody have any edits to those? If you can remember back a year. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, now Dave, go on to reports. Okay. Um, I believe everybody can see the PowerPoint uh, presentation that I'm sharing. As Tim mentioned, this time of the year, things are very fluid. Uh, budget numbers are changing by the hour sometimes. Uh, for instance, it was either Friday or Monday we got the general transportation aids in and we had to make some uh, changes because the uh, numbers weren't what we were projecting. And I had sent out the uh, PowerPoint presentation with the packet uh, Tuesday evening during council, and, but uh, we've already, uh, Tuesday afternoon, we found out the health insurance numbers. So there will be some small tweaks that we're working on. Uh, when I did this version two of the PowerPoint, I did put in anything in red that uh, has changed since the last PowerPoint. So I guess I'll get started from here then. So some key things, uh, the mayor and I and AJ have been uh, working very hard. Uh, we're trying to, uh, what we're calling the uh, reten retention incentive to try and keep employees and attract new ones as needed. Uh, we've got a 4.0 uh, coal or wage increase for employees for both union and non-union that includes uh, full-time, part-time pool employees. So it's going to be 4% uh, for everybody. Um, it's not the rate of inflation. I think it was uh, today uh, they announced 8.7, I believe, for Social Security. We can't do that under the levy limits. Uh, but at least we have got a 4%, which is a reasonable amount considering we were given 2.43% uh, increase allowed by the state. So like I said, we've been working very hard to do it. Uh, health insurance premiums in the budget right now, we've got it at 9.9% and no change to the cost of the employees. So they don't have to increase any out-of-pocket costs or any premiums or anything like that. Uh, as I said, uh, Social Security today went up by 8.7. If we were negotiating with unions, we'd be at 7.17 max. So it's a psychological amount to get up to 4%. Would we like to pay employees more? But we can't do it. There's just too many things involved. Uh, at the net new construction of 2.43, as I indicated before, 
that's a record year, but that only gives us 186589 that we could go up. In kind of rough figures, each 1% of payroll for the levy departments with roll-ups is about 77000 So we could give a 2% uh, raise to employees, stay with under limit, but that doesn't account for inflation and everything else. Looking at... Uh, John, I know Microsoft and every other software company goes up quite a bit. Our refuse collection fees went up by over 9%. Uh, looking at AJ insurance, we budgeted 10% increase in everything. So it's hard to do. Um, the good news is the equalized value went up by 16.57% for, for 23 Mathematically, the mill rate is going to drop uh, when your uh, value increases that much. And I did want to point out that consistent with the 22 adopted budget, we do not have anything in the contingency account. So if the council wishes to uh, amend the budget and use a funding source, it's going to have to come from general fund or some other source. Uh, the other thing that uh, has been interesting in the past is geo debt. Where do we compare as a percentage of equalized value? Right now, we're at 2.34% for the budget year. Uh, with the uh, CIP that uh, was approved by the CIP committee uh, the, the previous week, we're projected to go up to 2.45. Uh, the city has a policy at 4% and the state statute is at 5%. So we're well comfortably below that those amounts. So personnel changes that the mayor made uh, in addition to that 4%. Uh, we looked at human resources, the admin assistant, We've increased that uh, position from 20 to 30 hours per week. Uh, AJ can tell you there's been a lot of turnover. They're hiring uh, all the time. Uh, they're, that, def, that position is definitely needed. Uh, the fact that HR uh, serves all the departments too, you know, we looked at that and said that's gonna help out everybody. Recreation programs, their admin position, we've increased from 1503 hours to 25 hours per week. That's a two-person department plus the admin, so it's a very bare-bones department. And similar to that, uh, this uh, administrative person in the city hall helps out the other departments you know, as backups, so it's helping a lot of other departments too. Uh, I mentioned the reten retention incentive earlier. Uh, the, there's people that are getting more than a 4% raise because we're trying to get those positions closer to the job market. Uh, as of, uh, say, Friday, we were affecting 13 positions, uh, and uh, we have increased that to 14 different positions. So uh, it doesn't, for all the positions, it doesn't necessarily get them to market, but we're trying to get them closer to market. Uh, some people, if they weren't brought to market, uh, we're looking at a two to three year plan trying to get them there. And I've got something in red at the bottom. The plan for budget year 24 is that we want to increase staffing in public works. They're gonna have more roads to plow. They're gonna have more uh, parks to maintain. Uh, so <coughs> we know even this year with this current staffing, it's going to be tough in 23. So 24, that's our plan to work on there. And we're going to continue the retention incentive to get those uh, certain positions closer to market and maybe others. Of course, that's the plan. We can't say that we're going to achieve it fully, but that's our intent. So as with any other budget year, the requests from the departments were uh, higher than the amount uh, available. Uh, so uh, the mayor, myself, and the uh, looked at it. Uh, 
and one of the reductions we asked uh, was for IT to uh, reduce his expenditures by 30,000. Uh, John gave me a list of eight to 10 different accounts where they thought they could reasonably make that adjustment. Uh, for the Opera House, uh, Bill had lowered his membership revenue uh, to 100,000. We looked at the data for uh, 21 and 22. 22, or they've already hit 133,000. We felt comfortable in saying that the Opera House could get the 130,000. Uh, he's got, um, and there's a typo there, uh, he's got a advertising expense that we decreased it from 17,000 to 12,000, a 5,000 de decrease. I apologize for the typo. Um, but he's already got 85,000 in a different account for ads and publications. Uh, the redevelopment authority, uh, Tim, the mayor removed 7,500 in professional services related to the River Bluff funding. Uh, and that was brought up to the RDA last evening at their meeting and uh, they were supportive of that change. Uh, in addition, the RDA had recommended that the uh, general fund put in 43,200 in professional fund, professional services for grant funding. Uh, again, that was taken out and the RDA was supportive of that move also. Of course, there's, you know, minor changes here. We may have moved an account down by 50 to $75. I don't think anybody wants me to go line by line on that detail. So net new construction, I've got the uh, chart here, city of Stoughton versus Dane and the uh, rest of the state. As I said, uh, we're at 2.43, that's our highest amount ever. And I've got the um, cities for Dane County there so you can see them. So at 2.43, we are uh, definitely in the middle of everything. Uh, Fitchburg's lucky enough to have 4.16%. Uh, City of Edgerton, which is very little in the uh, Dane County, had a 0.1% increase. I hope they have some more increase in the rest of the city or else they're going to have a very hard budget. And our equalized value went up by astounding 16.57. We were actually higher than uh, Dane County as a whole. So uh, that's a tribute to all the departments, uh, planning and development and everybody else that have been working to uh, get all these new subdivisions and everything going so that we can have the growth. So the mill rate, uh, and you see some numbers in red, uh, mill rate actually uh, is decreasing by 9.02%, which means that uh, the tax levy on a property worth 100000 is going down 69.53, about $70 for each 100000 of assessed value. Uh, that number changed from last time because I realized that I had not put the um, charges to the local municipal, uh, the surrounding townships for uh, fire service into the debt. So that gave us another 84,000 if I remember right. So uh, as we said, numbers keep changing, but that was a good change. Lowering the levy by 84,000 thought was a good thing. This is a new chart for mill rates for TIF districts. Uh, I don't think you've seen this before. I thought it was interesting at least. So that you could see the increase in the various TIDs and what their value went up. And as you can see, Kettle Park West is definitely leading the uh, game uh, in dollar-wise, $9.6 million. Uh, but if you're looking at percentages, TID number eight for the riverfront went up 265%. So 
every little bit helps, uh, but each, uh, the mill rate on the TIDs uh, is going down by 12%, and so property uh, for the incremental financing is actually going down by $250 uh, on a hundred thousand dollar property so I think everybody's going to be pleased about that so the property tax by department and I've got this uh, sorted uh, so that it's in the uh, dollar amount of the levy uh, and then comparing against the prior year I think no uh, surprise to anybody uh, just like with many other uh, municipalities, our police department is a large portion of our budget. They're almost 42% of the levy. The, um, I've got some information coming at later uh, with some very high level explanations for some of the increases, but uh, as you can see, we've got departments up and down. Uh, for in instance, the city clerk's budget is actually going down by about 15%, but a large uh, reason behind that is calendar year 23, we're going to only have two elections as opposed to four elections in calendar year 22 and 24. So I uh, was talking with uh, Candy, and she agreed, why would we want to levy for something we don't need, let's have the uh, that money available for other departments. However, that means her levy will be going up in 24. So I just wanted to praise everybody of that. Uh, some other things to look at: your operational levy uh, is 62% and 38% for debt. Uh, but that's uh, two reasons. Number one, we're growing, and number two, the levy limit law forces you to have debt. So when we look at property tax comparison by count or by category, just comparing the areas and public safety, which is uh, fire uh, inspection and the police department is around 48% of our budget, no surprise. That's very consistent with other municipalities. Uh, we do have, in the culture, recreation, education, uh, the biggest components of that is the public library. And uh, then after that is the um, parks. But uh, in whole, uh, culture, recreation is 23.2. Uh, a lot of culture, recreation, education is not mandated services, but they definitely do add value and attract people to the area. Uh, for instance, the Opera House, uh, it's not just Stoughton residents who use the Opera House. So uh, it's hard to quantify you know, the economic effects of those. So that's why you have to balance mandated versus non-mandated services. Uh, for the general governments, we spend about 21% uh, of our uh, levy on the support uh, or uh, the elected officials. Health and Human Services is probably a new category that you haven't seen before in either the budget documents or um, the financial statements. And that's because we need to follow Department of Revenue rules for categories. So uh, the senior center in the past uh, has been reported as culture recreation. Well, that's not by the rules, but I could uh, at least see that. But uh, I cannot say that the cemetery has anything to do with culture, recreation, or education. <laughs> Uh, same thing with the food pantry. Again, that's a health and human services activity. So you're seeing that category for the first time, but the 22 financial statements will also be reflecting that. Uh, conservation and development is the on the levy, 
it's the second lowest area that we have, but that's for the RDA. Uh, economic development is actually for the 7,500 is for uh, Becker Professional Services to look at uh, the various or business retention, trying to keep them. And planning and development is about 116,000 on the levy. Uh, that is not related to general government or inspections. And public works is, if you're looking at the levy, it's the smallest area of our levy. Uh, that is because I changed how we're doing revenue to match revenues and expenditures. And much of Brett's public works department for the streets gets the general transportation aids and the connecting highway aids. So when you put that all together, uh, matching revenues and expenses, his department doesn't need as much levy support. Uh, now, we do not have a slide ready yet because I've been trying to get the numbers on my spreadsheet to balance, but uh, Public Works Streets spends over a million dollars. You know, so it's not like uh, He's only got 78000 in expenses. Uh, to be honest, uh, Brett could probably tell you that uh, 78000 for road construction probably gives you uh, 50 feet. You know, it's not much. So bottom line, both the operational levy, which is right at uh, the levy limit, and the debt levy is going to be about $2.5 million dollars. That's roughly $600,000 higher than last year for a dollar amount, or 6.1%. As I mentioned, I'm still working on the expenditures, so that isn't uh, ready yet uh, for prime time viewing. So we have uh, fund balances uh, or net position applied to the budget. And uh, Jamin and I do a little things a little bit differently. Uh, he, the method he used, there's nothing wrong with it. I prefer revenues and expenditures to balance each other so you can make sure that uh, everything's accounted for. He showed it a, a different way in the general ledger and there's nothing wrong with it. But we both have uh, it in his budget uh, narratives and mine, we both have this explanation in here. In the general fund, which is where most people are looking at, uh, we've only got four items using uh, fund balance. Uh, the sustainability committee, I'm assuming that they are gonna carry forward uh, $5,600 and want to use that for the next year. Uh, same thing with the art council, I'm assuming that they're going to have a 2,000 carry forward for next year. We've got 85,000 in there for retirement payouts as uh, authorized by Resolution 175-2022. Um, and you're gonna see that going forward that we've got in the budget uh, using that for uh, potential retirements. If nobody retires, it just stays in the assigned fund balance. But if it's used, um, then uh, we will have a uh, will transfer the dollar amount needed from the assigned fund balance to the applicable department. Uh, so, for instance, the police department earlier in the year had three uh, longtime employees who retired. Their payout was about $165,000. So we've got uh, that as charge to the appropriate department so that we know how much we're spending for public safety. And uh, they're actually helping us out a little bit in the general transportation aids for the public works department because a portion of the police department's expenses go into the calculation for the general transportation aids. So it, I don't know if the percentage is different municipal versus county, but at the county, 60% of the sheriff expenditures go into the general, transporta general transportation aids calculation. The percentage may change on municipalities, but it's still there. 
Uh, the other one uh, that I wanted to uh, bring up is uh, Fund 232, the Senior Center Special Fund. We're using about 200,000 of fund balance for the annex remodeling in 23. Uh, Cindy was successful in getting the last of her donations, so between calendar years 2021 and 22, we've uh, gotten donations of 200,000 for that project. So kudos to hers and thanks to all the uh, uh, donations that were received. The city does have a fund balance policy for the general fund and the policy states that it should be between 20 to 25 percent of the subsequent year's operating expenditures budget. If you look at the calculations we, and for the latest financial statements, we're at about 32 percent. So if we were to say we only want to have 25 percent, we've got about 1.2 million dollars uh, that we could use of fund balance. I'm going to back up a minute here because I forgot to mention one thing highlighted on this screen in yellow. Uh, a a last-minute change, uh, we tweaked a, a two employees in public works to give them uh, additional monies, getting them closer to the market level. And the mayor did approve that we used the whopping figure of $5,429 of fund balance to stay below the levy limit. So back to this slide, if we've got $1.2 million, I think we can find $5,500 going forward uh, for budgets going in the future. And just a general comment, the uh, departments, uh, between the department heads and myself, we put in projected figures uh, for current year activity in the general fund uh, if the departments have the numbers, I look at it for reasonableness. Um, you know, I'm not going to uh, uh, shoot them if they don't get to their numbers. It's a reasonable estimate. But based on those reasonable estimates, the general fund is going to have a projected surplus of 375000 for the year. So um, that's because we've been budgeting pretty conservatively on revenues and uh, with the goal of retaining employees and giving a decent wage increase, we're looking at revenues to try and get them a little bit closer to actual. The expenditure restraint program, as you know, uh, we have uh, to adhere to that program. We get about 200000 give or take, of money from the state for adhering to the program. And this year we had 9.2% allowed. However, due to some of the accounting changes that we've been making and the fact that we didn't use 200,000 yeah, 200, of property tax levy to lower the debt levy, I said, or to lower the amount of bonding, excuse me, uh, we use that, and so I didn't have transfers in and transfers out. We stopped doing the unfunded pension liability. We paid that off to Stoughton Utilities. We lowered the amount that we were using for retirement reserves. So right now, I'm approximately 900000 below the allowed increase front under the expenditure restraint program. In a perfect world, I'd like to go up to the maximum so I don't cut myself off for the next year. But if I'm going to add 50000 in expenditures, i got to find 50000 in revenue to pay for it. And I can't get property tax revenue. Uh, and if there's a grant, great, you know, we'll do that. Um, just thinking out loud, uh, Mayor, we may want to move some things that are fully grant funded or at least partially grant funded out of the CIP and move it into the operational budget 
to get the operational expenditures up in the general fund so that we're closer to the limit. We'll have to talk about that, but uh, that may be a, uh, something that we do to help ourselves in future years. So as I said earlier, we're under the, um, or we're at the levy limit right now, but we've got room under the expenditure restraint program. So we may play some games to try and keep, give ourselves some wiggle room for next year. For those council members who, who are, as part of the finance committee, they've been hearing more about the uh, budget amendments that we've been doing, and council has been doing that. Um, but uh, I've had to make some changes to get things uh, more accurately reported in the financial statements for 22 and going forward. Uh, it's especially important because when the um, ARPA when the council gets back to allocating ARPA funds and they're actually being spent, that triggers us having a single audit, which is another audit that we'll have to pay for, but uh, we have to make sure that we're coding all of those grants correctly so that the auditors and I report it correctly on the CFA schedule of uh, expenditures on federal uh, appropriations. So all these changes have been time consuming, uh, but uh, a lot of them have been done. Uh, but as the council knows, we eliminated uh, funds and to mirror what's in the financial statements or there was no activity in those funds. That's another reason why our expenditures were down because we weren't transferring money back and forth between funds that we really didn't need to. So that'll help, that helps us in the expenditure program also. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a balanced budget. Every department now has revenues and expenditures that zero net to each other. And the plan is, and property taxes are in each department. The plan is the departments are gonna be receiving one twelfth of the property tax revenue in their line item every month. And so looking at AJ, for instance, you know, if as long as your uh, wages and benefits are one twelfth, mm -hmm. you're going to tie out, you know, so you can look at the bottom line for that month. If you've got more revenues than expenses, you've got a surplus going right now. Now, at the beginning of the year, sometimes some line items are skewed towards the beginning. You're going to be paying. Uh, your some of your maintenance fees, your dues, and things like that. So it's not a perfect world. I can obviously tweak things. Um, the uh, rec programs may be skewed more towards um, summer, you know, in the warmer months. So we can definitely skew it so that they don't get one twelfth. You know, they may get smaller percentages in January, February, larger percentages in March through September, or whatever the case is. Uh, the um, Finance Committee is also aware that we created the, uh, what I call the General Revenues Department. That's for revenues that are not program specific, are shared revenues uh, and things like that, uh, so that we don't muddy the departments. Uh, for instance, uh, I could say, well, I post the, the general revenues, and so for the shared revenue of whatever it is, three or 400,000, that goes to my department. <coughs> I've got a surplus every year. You know, I'm an income producer. No, we're not gonna do that. Um, I also was looking at making sure that or as much as possible that we're consistent in where we put things. For instance, postage, some departments were putting it to postage, some funds put it to administration, other departments put it to operating expenses. Uh, the same thing with utilities, you know, they were going to different areas. Uh, 
the RDA, although I'm sure that my predecessor was bringing it up to them, the RDA wasn't aware that they were having utility charges every month because it was buried in operating expenses. So those type of things we were moving directly to add it uh, more detail so that from a management point of view, the department heads know where it's going. One of the other things that I'm doing on the benefits side, well, let me back up before benefits. I know AJ had asked shortly after I came here how much we were budgeting for longevity. And because we have longevity buried in with the other wage classifications, it was harder to get that out. I'm putting longevity to a new account so that we can tell right away how much we have. And uh, as I was uh, explaining that concept to Jim yesterday on it, uh, that helps when you're looking at your projections because if you think, you know, you're going to be close, you know, you're looking in October, I'm going to be close, you know, wages are below budget and everything else. And then in December when we pay longevity, that's a one-time hit, and if you're not planning for it, it could put you in a deficit mode if you're thinking you've got money available. So again, another management tool to help departments know going forward, plus it gives us an idea of how much we're really paying everybody for longevity pay. Can you explain what that is, Dave? Longevity? I mean, that's the first I've heard, yeah. Uh, and AJ, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, employees who have been here at least three years uh, will get $150 uh, longevity pay. And, and that's paid out it's either end of November, early December. So it's, it's, you're absolutely correct there, but then every additional year, the employee gets an additional $50 for that year. So it's a, a payment to them for the number of years that they've been in the position and a thank you. To me, it's basically their Christmas bonus yep. to uh, buy the things, but um, so it goes up $50 per year for each employee? Yep. Each employee who's been here over three years. So for instance, uh, I've got another two and a half years before I am eligible for the longevity pay. Yep. Uh, so one of the portions of my budget dealing with longevity actually went down because Jamin was eligible for it. He did not get it paid out because he wasn't here at the time. So if you're looking at the line item, my budget went down a little bit because of that. Okay. That was first one stated. Pardon me? Pardon? Somebody else, else have a question? I can't see the room or anything like that. I think somebody might have been talking in the background to somebody on their uh, laptop somewhere. Uh, the, other okay. th the other thing that I've been doing in expenses, and I haven't gotten to it in the actual payroll module or HR module, whichever it is, but uh, right now we had two accounts, one called employee benefits and one was called health insurance. Well, employee benefits was Social Security, pension, and life insurance. Health insurance was actually health and dental, but... I need the pension, life, and health separately stated for GASB 68 and 75 calculations. So what we've had to do in the past every year is now go into the payroll system and run those reports. I'd much rather just set up the payroll system so it posts it automatically and we don't have to go back and do it. So yeah, it's a one-time effort to get that done, but then it's always there. So uh, that is something that we've got to tackle. I would have loved to get it done current year, but it's not happening current year. So future year budget plans, as Tim mentioned, uh, many of the departments are doing things in Excel, and Excel's great if you're needing to um, do calculations, 3% increase, or you want to put in some more detail, but then the departments then have to key all that data into BSNA. So 
I'm going to be showing the department heads how to enter the footnotes, how the system can add everything in there. You can attach uh, your Excel spreadsheet if you want into the budget. So, you know, BSNA will be basically a one time or a one shot place to look for everything into the budget. So the next few pages are just high level highlights of the departments, what they went up or down, and some of the major factors included in it. Um, I'm not going to read everything word for word, uh, just because I'm, I'm not going to insult everybody's intelligence, but uh, I wanted to bring the factors that are uh, big for it. Uh, so, like, uh, I'll just go through City Council. Uh, your budget went up by 11.6%. That sounds like a lot. Well, wages and benefits went up by about $2,900 because of the scheduled salary increases uh, for the new alders, you know, with the terms of office. So, um, each year you're going to see that going up by about $3,000 because of it. And one thing that I also am doing is that the computer equipment and everything related to meeting rooms, I said, is a council expense because that's for the various committees of the council to meet. Um, municipal court, which is the next one, is they actually make money because the fines and forfeitures that they collect are more than the wages and office supplies. Uh, so their surplus increased by about $15,000. City attorney, something that we've budgeted. Dave, with that surplus, is that money then just go back to the general fund, or what happens with the surplus money? Yes, at the end of the day, that falls to the general fund. Um, city attorney is something that we have been light on in budgeting for. I increased their budget uh, by another 28000 or I recommended, I should say, increase it by 28000 which is almost 18%, but that I think is getting us a little bit closer to it. Um, Tim asked, and we did verify that wherever possible, we've been putting those legal fees to either the developer or the um, various TIF districts. And speak, going back to one of the changes we made, TIF districts, uh, they were putting everything into administration. So that had legal fees, that had auditor fees, that had any uh, office supplies. So we've separated that out so that we could truly demonstrate that we are moving uh, the legal fees to those other areas. Uh, city clerk, uh, as I indicated before, she's only got uh, two elections coming up in 23, and we were all in agreement why would we levy for four budget or four elections every year? Yes, it would smooth things out but then you're levying for a department that doesn't need it. So we felt it was more important to uh, put the money elsewhere where it's needed, but I've got it highlighted in red. She's going to jump up in the 24 budget, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, for H HR and risk management, um, that was one of the areas where we uh, moved the staff up uh, from 20 to 30 hours. Uh, but the various premiums for the various insurance coverages went up by 21700 uh, For the police department, he went up about 285000 but of that, uh, wages and benefits was 282000 I didn't think it was really worth looking into the other 3000 to figure out where it went up. Um, Dave, yes. Just a quick note: we have not um, <coughs> we have not started our negotiations with the police department either. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So does that mean, AJ, that it could go up more? No, I mean we don't have any additional funding available. So 
will have to you know negotiate appropriately but the city does not have any money to go beyond the four percent we're also at the levy limit or we're at the limit we're at the levy limit yep. yes okay uh, public works was uh, tweaked if not uh, yesterday the day before for two more employees so that's why we've got some items in red and as I pointed out before uh, I'm putting revenue to the department so it's specific so general transportation aids and con connecting highway aids go directly to the public works department his GTA even though it wasn't as much as we anticipated went up 150,000 against the prior year so uh, that's one of the major reasons why his levy went down by 28,000 and part of the GTA is it's based on a six-year average so you actually get rewarded for doing more road work mm -hmm. and even if you're doing the same number of lane miles every year uh, costs go up every year so the inflation uh, helps drive up the cost too and as you know uh, petroleum prices have gone through the roof in the last few years and that's a big component of uh, road construction uh, planning and development uh, we increased their um, permit fees by 55,000 uh, for the budget year 23 uh, but I did talk uh, to Rodney about that and he was comfortable with these numbers so that's an area we've, we've been conservative before but we definitely wanted to uh, get this more in line to where we were um, for the senior center we assume that the Dane County revenue would go up uh, at the same rate that we have for uh, 21 to 22 and we assume that same increase will go from 22 to 23 IT media services right now is I up. think you forgot you, you skipped over recreation oh okay <laughs> um, rec programs uh, is up about 10%, uh, which is an increase of 16.6. Uh, his wages and benefits went up by roughly $30,000. Offsetting that, he's got uh, revenue that went up by about uh, $7,000. You put those two together, and that would be an increase of 23,000. His increase was only about 17,000 so uh, Dan was able to find six to seven thousand in <laughs> expenses that he cut and still provide the various services that are needed does this uh, does a wage increase try to right size the director in this one at all it did a correction on the director as well as uh, Tony's position so both will be trying to be right sized this year we are attempting to as the mayor had talked about before over multiple years to try to make some corrections yes okay so i just wanted to make sure that no no problem part of yep part of that yep absolutely good question regina and uh going back to a uh, previous comment the uh rec admin position was increased in approximately 10 hours per week too but did you if i understood you correctly that rec appointment is also going to be shared with the general admin appointment or is it strictly to the rec department it's strictly to the rec department but when i was talking about sharing that position sits in the uh vestibule the rotunda there and if somebody comes to the door you know they're not going to say nope i'm not going to answer your question that's not my job that yeah. falls under other duties as assigned and having that placement at the front that is part of those responsibilities to help with no that. it's fine it what i just didn't want to happen is what happened a, a few years ago is that you tried to have a general 
you know, assistant trying to do the park and recs work and that just didn't work out. So if you actually hire someone that's gonna work with park and recs and then help out when needed, yep. you know, flipping it around. You got it. Yes, Regina, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, we envision that this position will have some hours within City Hall and other hours out in the field, whether it's gazebo night, movie night, maybe helping out on the weekends. Because right now, uh, Tony or Dan are, are taking care of some of them responsibilities at well, as well. And we wanted to increase the hours because we're having difficulty recruiting for that position. Yeah, hopefully uh, over a half-time position, we'll, we'll be able to entice somebody. And it's not like there's a lack of work for this person. They're not going to be twiddling their thumbs. No. I just, it's a great opportunity to add in there, talking about the recruiting. Any of these positions that are part-time or like in, at Public Works that are 11, 99 hours, we are struggling to fill these positions. People just don't want um, positions that are, are part-time or LTE. So we're really struggling with those positions. So we're hoping these additional hours on that position will put us in a better, a better position for recruiting. Now, was it requested that this be a full-time position and we only got them half-time or? Yes, that yes. is correct. And as the mayor said when he started, you know, our, our, our intent this year, or David, I'm sorry, said it, is to retain staff and to try to make some corrections for others that are not at market. Right now, our greatest um, failure is that we're not paying at, in all positions, market rate and we're losing staff. So we're trying to retain our great staff that we have by offering the 4%. And then on those positions that we know we're off, we've identified those and said we're gonna chip away on that list and uh, try to work on those over the next couple of years. We couldn't make all the corrections we wanted to, <coughs> so we had to look at those positions and figure out how to divvy up that funding and uh, chip away at as many people as we could as possible. Tim, do you have anything no, to I add to that? You know, I would just say that that has been the strategy and the trade-off is, is not hiring any more additional full-time staff this year. Obviously, that's where we want to end up eventually, but given what's happening, you know, in the labor market and the economy, we figured we better at least take care of our own. Correct. What we're finding is, is other communities are getting really aggressive uh, pursuing our employees and we value them and we're going to do whatever we can to keep them. Yep. To put things in perspective, I don't know if all of you are following local politics, but um, Dane County, 9% increase for 2023 for their staff. We can't compete with that. And those, those, that is our competition. Our neighboring communities, it's the same thing. So that's why we decided this year we really need to focus on retaining our employees and uh, putting a value on that. As, as much as we could. No, I, I completely agree. I'm just concerned that by only having another part-time employee when they need a full-time, even though they get wage increases, they're still down a half an employee. Yep. So. And in some cases, and it's a full. more work to an overstretched department as it is. Yeah, and I would add that, you know, we do have a, a receptionist at the desk that works 20 hours a week and they do help out and support park and rec as well with the keys and with phone calls so you know we're looking at 25 hours for this position but there is additional hours that are being devoted to park and rec already now is this park and rec a uh, new position i mean i saw originally that it was a pretty low uh Pay scale is that also increased? Yeah, that is going up. I'm I'm going to go off off memory here, Regina. Don't hold me to it. But with the four percent, I think we bumped it to fifteen fifty seven, which is a a somewhat desirable wage. It definitely isn't where we'd like to have it. Um, but we have many positions that are like that. <clears throat> Lisa Reeves had a question, Regina. Well, I don't okay, know. I can't see her. So yep, go ahead, I, Lisa. It, well, just a comment. I think you would probably agree, AJ, that there. Parks and Rec is not the only department that's struggling with needing additional help, right? Absolutely. So Misery Loves Company, I think, right. is a number who are 
in the whole city and many departments that are in the same position. Correct. So. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Now, what we did last year is we added hours at the fire department. We made that 30 hour position 40. Um, we added the position for AJ and then we're her department and we're going to add more hours to it this year. So we're, we're incrementally trying, like AJ said, chip away at it to get where we want. The unfortunate reality is, is, you know, while the, the county and the state continue to collect um, a tremendous amount of sales tax revenue and the state also collects income tax revenue and think about how the numbers have gone up because pricing has gone up. They don't share that revenue with us. So, you know, our effort is to lobby, especially the state is to give us more shared revenue and, you know, that's where you get into the politics is at the state level. But, you know, I, I sent an email to, to our lobbyists yesterday just really kind of describing where we're at, what we're trying to do, and what some of our barriers are in order to get to the level that we need. Because the whole reason, there was two reasons for the spending caps when they were put into place. One was to reduce property taxes. Well, it has reduce the mill rate, especially on the operations end. But what's happening is it's forcing everybody to borrow more money, which actually costs the taxpayers more money in the long run. So it's just not working. Yeah. And the other thing it was supposed to do was create an incentive and encourage people to grow so they could get the net new construction. Well, the state hasn't grown. And the only county that's really grown is Dane County. Dane County in the last 10 years, according to the census, provided 30% of the new housing startups and 36% of the new population, even though the population in Dane County as a whole is 9.5% of the states. So right now the county is just exploding, and with that comes a responsibility for, for us to participate in that um, you know, so we can support our businesses and, and try to help people with workforce housing, but it also comes with a cost where we have to be able to retain and, you know, recruit and retain our employees to provide those services that are necessary to accommodate the growth. To dovetail off from that, if I may. Sure. Um, what we're running into, just so everyone's aware, is when an employee leaves and that salary's lower, in order for us to be able to attract, we're having to pay more to a new person coming in with no institutional knowledge for the city of Stoughton than the person that's leaving the position. So I'm saying when it comes to salaries, um, because we did not adopt the um, Springstead plan or we didn't fund anything there, we have continued to slide backwards on these employees' salaries. And they stay here you know, maybe you, you would call it golden handcuffs because of WRS, or it has something to do with, you know, I really care about my city. But when it comes to those individuals leaving, for me to be able to bring someone in our department, we're struggling with the current wages. And right. I don't think it's right that we pay that new person more than that individual who's been in that seat for several years. Yeah, it's so, really about equity is what it comes down to. Equity is absolutely and we're, right. And we're trying to do our best to address it with, whatever resources we have. Mm -hmm. And you can see by going through the presentation that Dave has done an incredible job of trying to position us to do as much as we can. But somehow, you know, the point came up the other day in our leadership meeting, somehow we always find that funding when it's trying to bring somebody new in, because we have to, we have to fill that hole. I want us to position ourselves in the next few years so that we're paying people at a market rate and we're able to recruit in at a market rate. But that individual leaving is not causing a big gap in our uh, funding that we have available and not stealing from Peter to pay Paul and putting Dave in a position going in the next year trying to figure out how do we handle a new salary plus, for example, if that person didn't take benefits, you're now pushing on or taking on additional money there that we hadn't even thought about. So there's, there's many factors there to be thinking about as we're talking about salaries, equity, and being able to retain staff. It's beyond just that piece of uh, the wages that we're paying. It's the wages and the benefits. 
Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments? I if had, not, well, I had a what? couple of, but I, I don't know if we wanted to wait till the end, but just one, what is CPIU? Consumer Price Index Urban. Oh, okay. And then um, going back to the city council, I, so are there some wages that are going up? Because I don't remember, I remember that came to finance and then it got dropped off our agenda about any wage increases. Did I misunderstand about future council members getting? Um, I have got a Excel spreadsheet I can send you showing okay. you know, what's coming out in the next few years. Okay. We but can. I think they were all scheduled uh, which each, each new term of office, and I think they're remaining the same, but I'll find that spreadsheet. Yeah, because I remember we talked about it in finance, and then I thought we just dropped the idea because we weren't going to... We, well, it's potential. Not. You found another $3,000. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah, Don't tell AJ that. Circle. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> She's already thinking. Um, we also brought that up at personnel, Lisa, if you recall, and the group talked about it and did not think that that had been approved and agreed that they didn't think it should be looked at yeah, right I now. Think, I, I think we decided not to take any action on right. it. It just dropped off um, the agenda. Sure. So I, I don't remember voting on it for any yeah. increase. We'll double check that yeah, one. Yeah, I'll reinforce that too. I don't, I don't think that we, we never brought that to a vote anywhere. We never came to any reasonable conclusion or at least um, we didn't have any path forward in order to implement it. We couldn't make a decision on that, so we just decided to uh, kind of let it go for the time being. Okay. I'll find that uh, spreadsheet, and we'll get back to you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, Lisa? I don't think so. Thank okay. you. Um, okay, getting back to IT media services, uh, they are up about 115000 even after the uh, 30,000 uh, was graciously taken out. Uh, but uh, John, is there anything that you wanted to add so that they can understand why you had to go up so much? Um, a couple of things that we had done is, <clears throat> if you look for the number of Microsoft users and the, the licensing that we have, we are under licensed in our Microsoft Office accounts and I want to try and bring those up and get those to become Client and prior to us getting a Microsoft audit. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing in there as well is updating our server licenses and the user CALs, which basically what it is is Microsoft says, oh, you've got a server, that's great, here's how much it costs. But then there's an additional cost for if you want people to connect to those servers. They're called user CALs. So we're actually getting in compliance with our Microsoft licensing there. Uh, the other one I want to point out, too, is our telephone increase has, has gone up considerably here. And the reason for that is I'm looking to uh, replace the existing phone system that we have right now and moving it to the cloud. So we're going to be replacing all of the phones, and those are a monthly cost then that you have per phone. Um, another part of that, too, is I've got to do something with the speed and efficiency is going to down to uh, Department of Public Works because right now they are on a point-to-point -point charter circuit that is grossly under provision, but it's costing $760 a month. And I'm going to be replacing that with um, an internet connection with TDS and doing some VPN work, which is virtual private network, um, to get them to a speed of 300 megabits, which is going to increase their performance and their ability to be able to do their jobs right now. Because they're, they're doing a couple things right now that are heavy, heavy in graphics, for instance, um, the GIS software where they're pulling maps down. They can actually say, download this map, go get coffee, visit with somebody, and come back, and it's still downloading. And I gave them a, a brief example of what it would look like in a future world um, and they were very pleased about that. The only issue is Charter, we're still under contract with them and I have to complete that contract term 
whether I terminate the contract or not, I still have to pay what's remaining on it. But when I get it down to a certain point, I'm going to have TDS go in for a 50% buyout of the early termination fee. But I have to keep that expense in there, but that's going to drop off once uh, Charter's out of the picture. Uh, the other thing is uh, under general revenues, uh, there's a lot of changes there, but uh, payment and move taxes that we get from Stoughton Utilities, the amount that uh, they calculated uh, is down about 35000 Makes sense because the mill rate is going down everywhere, so you know the amount of taxes that they would pay is going down. Uh, we did allocate... 50,000 of the rent uh, that they pay to general revenues as opposed to putting it into the building maintenance fund. The building maintenance fund is still having a surplus even with that 50,000 transfer. But uh, we said we'd rather use that 50,000 for employees rather than uh, putting it against uh, potentially bonding for less. Uh, Good thing about uh, interest rates going up is we're looking to get interest income, so I'm projecting about $64,000 more, which does help out. And we didn't have to uh, do transfers uh, of about 250000 for the uh, employee retirements and the unfunded pension liabilities, so that helped out there too. And as I pointed out, uh, we used a whopping $5,429 of fund balance that I'll have to figure out some way to uh, come up with that amount next year, but I think I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, this year you said we carried over over 300000 Oh, excuse me. Uh, it, that's the projection that we're... Yeah. Yep. So, and, and that just happens mostly because of gaps in employment, and I don't know what the other factors are, but I think that's probably the biggest one. Right. So we typically end up carrying over money anyway, and we're trying to leave, you know, the least amount of money on the table as we can, I guess is the way I'm going to describe it, and, and try to use that for our employees. For the public library, his, um, their levy did go up about 82000 which is about 12.5%. Uh, of that, 44000 was in wages and benefits, but I'd also like to point out, too, that uh, approximately 27000 in fund balance uh, was applied against the 21 levy. Uh, we sit, he doesn't have fund balance that we can do that again, so we had to get him back up to where, we, uh, where it should be. That's the danger of using fund balance. You've got a, you're in the hole the next year, so... And that fund balance was basically created from savings during COVID where they couldn't fully staff it. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a good stopgap for last year, but we knew going into it, it wasn't going to be a sustainable plan. So that's why we, we added, you know, back in out of the, the transfer. Yeah, uh, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, you know, my understanding is that the contribution of the fund balance in last year allowed, you know, opened up some room under the levy limit for the city to do some other things yeah it so, was very helpful okay. yeah yeah it's uh and, and we appreciate the uh you know the the increase to get us back to where we need to be so uh the opera house uh their levy did go up by forty thousand um bill uh has been trying to make changes. He's reduced his advertising budget somewhat uh, and trying to uh, get the ticket revenues up. Uh, he's still struggling from COVID, but uh, given the fact that the Opera House has had uh, deficits in the past few years, uh, we knew we needed to get that levy a little bit closer to actual so it would be a break even. Uh, under the RDA, slight increase for them, $9,500. Uh, we've got uh, $5,000 for utilities that was never budgeted before, and then uh, $4,500 additional for back professional services. 
Uh, special assessments is something new this year. Um, we uh, had not uh, budgeted for it uh, in the past, but uh, or what I did is the interest income that we had, whether it's on delinquent property taxes or their uh, fund balance, uh, I said, okay, we're going to use that interest income, putting it against the levy. And then because the general transportation aids and connecting highway aids came in about 32,000 less than we anticipated, uh, we talked with the mayor and we felt uh, comfortable using 10,000 of that fund balance and special assessments to offset the quote loss that we had in public works given that special assessments fund balance all relates to public works activity for curb gutter and so forth uh, we felt it was reasonable um, that fund has a fund balance over 600,000 so 10,000 out of there is a very small percentage and under shared ride services which is now a new fund uh, we changed the uh, revenue for the taxi grant we've been going pretty conservative in the past and I put in a figure I feels uh, much closer to actual uh, under the levy limit a lot of numbers on this page this is uh, just showing how everything is calculated I'm not going to walk you through the detail unless you want it uh, but this shows where we can go up the hundred eighty six thousand five hundred eighty nine dollars so what's the next step uh, the proposed budget for operations in other words not debt is exactly at the levy limit for Wisconsin statutes uh, I would not recommend lowering the operational levy because then you put yourself at a lower level for subsequent years yes you can potentially get that back you got to jump through hoops and you got a five win five year window to do it uh, I would not recommend it uh, going that route um, we've got a uh, fund balance of about 300,000 in debt service but I'm not recommending using any of that fund balance at the current time to lower the debt levy I need to take a look at it and figure out where it came from because it could still potentially be unspent bond proceeds and I don't want to do that and cause ourselves a problem in the future so given all that if you're looking to add something you as the council are looking to add an expense somewhere you either have to reduce an expense somewhere else find a revenue source for it or use fund balance to pay for it or a combination of everything but like I said we're at the legal levy limit right now and that's where we're recommending that we stay at to help give ourselves the problem if uh, right. I'll arbitrarily pick a number let's just say the council said nope we're gonna lower taxes by a hundred thousand right. dollars that gives us even more problems for AJ to get the uh, amount that we're going to be able to add for employees so uh, it may look good in paper saying we lowered taxes but you're causing yourselves problems in the future so at that point I've been rambling on for uh, about uh, 70 mm -hmm. minutes give or take so I'm gonna open up the floor to questions if anybody has it and AJ's got her hand up yeah I just want to take this opportunity I know with this being Dave's first year um, I've been watching from afar and working with him side by side and uh, I just want to say Dave you've done an incredible job coming into this and I hope everyone realizes the hours that he's put in with this being his first year and uh, I'm very proud of what you've done and what how you've been able to as we called it find some things in the cookie jar so and make this 4% AJ, happen. AJ, the one we're so talking right you. now, the human resource lady, <laughs> we can't afford to get somebody 20 hours for us, but she just gave her part-time administrator an extra 10 you, hours a week. You have to mute but yourself. But it's not in the budget, so she went from 20 to 30 hours, but we can't get anybody. You have to mute yourself. Who is that talking? 
I don't know who that was talking. I don't know, but it's pretty insulting. Mm. Who is Tammy? I didn't see who was actually talking. All right. So where were we at, Regina? Okay. It was Tammy, uh, the assistant clerk. Pardon? That was Tammy, the assistant clerk. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> Does any Thank council you. member uh -huh. have any questions? I mean, Dave, were you planning on going through the different spreadsheets? Or, I mean, I think you did a great job summarizing. And thank you for um, putting everything together that, and trying to find some money for our staff. I greatly appreciate that because coming into this budget after giving utilities that big bump I was not feeling very good about this, so I'm happy that we at least can give our employees a 4% increase. I know it's not nine, but it's better than what we've been able to do in a long time. And to try to at least make some steps to right size, you know, employees. And yes, AJ, it would have been wonderful if we could have done the Springstead, but we had no money back right. then. I mean, right, I understand that, Regina. I was just trying to make the point of where we've come from and where we're at today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was believe me, I think you would have, hands down, everybody would have passed it if we could have. Right, and if we'd had I, the funding. It's the same issue we're in today, and that's the only point I was trying to make. Yeah, but at least this time we actually can start that process back then it, yeah. we couldn't even begin so I'm a little bit encouraged I just wish that we could right size everybody and wave a magic wand I mean it's discouraging discouraging AGM. that um, Dane County and Madison has the ability to increase and we don't out of curiosity, but, AJ, mm -hmm. what would it actually cost us? To Greg, could you speak into your microphone? To to right size for everyone, bring everybody up. I do not have that figure right now, Greg. That is it, the next it's, thing. It's, we it's, leadership met this met on Tuesday, yeah. and we talked about and we made the mayor aware. We would um, like to put that project together. Same thing that I did for utilities, going in and looking at market rate on all employees and then coming forth with what that number is. But we want to start that in January, not in September. Yeah, okay. So that's one of the things that we're going to work on. Yeah, and really the process was is AJ met with each of the department heads to identify mm -hmm. really the critical needs, and that's what we've tried to address here, understanding we can't take care of everybody that deserves it, and even those that we're trying to take care of, like Dave mentioned, it might be a multi-year thing. Um, we were able to do that because of things that Dave did in combination of the net new construction that was created by the record growth we had last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to monitor, um, you know, earlier this year and kind of throughout the spring and summer when the assessments start coming in, what our growth will look like so we can hopefully get an earlier start next year right. on our budgeting process. Um, but we know, as Dave had in one of the early uh, slides, that, you know, at some point we're going to have to address some staffing as well. Uh, you know, particularly, I think, in public works, certainly stands out um, because of the increased parks and roads, but also all the departments, because if we're growing, that means we're going to have more people, which means more people at the library, more people, um, you know, on the roads, which, you know, police, fire, and EMS will have more calls. Um, you know, just more work for HR, you know, because we'll have to have more staffing, uh, more work for Dave, you know, so, uh, you know, more people voting, more work for, you know, the clerk's office as well. So every office is impacted by the growth and we'll continue to look for opportunities and efficiencies mm -hmm. as, as we build future budgets. Yeah. Um, but we're so, certainly open to any you know, questions or suggestions you might have on what was just presented. Yeah, just to, 
just just a comment. Uh, the reason I ask for this is is just simply to ask for the numbers. Is just to simply show uh, just how big of a mountain we have to climb. Right. And and it's 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 I'm sure it's astronomical. I mean, and, and you know, it, it makes it makes it very very difficult for us to to try and understand without that number. Right. And you've had that number in the past, Greg. Yeah. When we, we, we've gone through that exercise and we've shown you what it is. So we'll do it again so we have, have modern numbers and up to date. Yep. But um, I think the, the big thing to look at, though, is these, these um, wages and looking at truly what those comps are. We can, we can get that information. We just did it for utilities. So it's a doable thing. Uh, just a question. Could you remind us, are we... Are we voting on the budget on the 19th, or is there one meeting or to follow that? The budget the, adoption the, itself? Well, just could you remind us of the sequence? Part of my question so is because now that we've had your presentation, um, I'm guessing I'm going to have follow-up questions, but you did a great job. And so now having this in front of us, I just want to make sure that we understand the sequence. So if there's I questions, think the, the we're plan. not waiting to the last second. The plan would be between now and next Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, when we have our next budget meeting, is for us internally to update what we've presented based on additional information that's coming in okay. and any feedback that we might get you know, from the council members on things that you might see. So if you see something, please you know, send Dave an email so he can double check it and make sure. Um, it's, it's correct and you understand it um, and then the plan would be would be to actually vote on all the budgets CIP operations and utilities on November 15th because of the election you might remember we we canceled the, the meeting on the 8th and then we move it to the 15th so that's when we would adopt all the budgets so between now and next week certainly the council can digest it We'll continue to tweak the numbers. Dave will present any updates we may have. And I think ultimately the Committee of the Whole will make a recommendation to the Council. Is that how you understand it, Regina? Yes. Good. Um, well, on the agenda you had, I was trying to find it. You had a number of things listed for next week. City Council, Emergency, Fire Department, Mayor, Municipal Court. I guess it's all back to what the we, same. I'm looking at your agenda, Dave. So what we did is we asked staff members where they would be available to answer questions on their department. So tonight, okay. AJ and John and Jim are here. And then at the next meeting, those that are listed on there would be available for any questions. Certainly, if you have any questions for people that was on tonight's list, if you could send us to them, we can work throughout the week to get the answers prepared for Wednesday night. We didn't want to have to make them come for both nights, if, especially if they weren't available. Yeah. And it kind of worked out where some of them were here tonight and the balance are going to be here next week. Yeah, we have, like, our, our library board meets next Wednesday, so I'm not able to be here for the sure. So if anybody has any questions... I know it's on the agenda, but yeah, about the library, I can answer those. So, do you have any questions for Jim or any of the other directors that are here tonight? Can't see anybody in the room. No, but just and everybody to be else says their camera's off tonight, so I can't see them either. <laughs> <laughs> but just so we all understand, if there's questions after this evening, we should email them. To Dave, correct? So we can funnel all those questions through you rather than sending messages through directors of, and all that, correct? Well, yeah, I would ask that you send it to both myself and the mayor so that we're both aware of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, then we'll work with the departments. I may know the answer right away and respond back, but obviously if I know the answer and it's for Jim's department I'll be contact you're putting him in the response too just so he's in the loop uh, but if I don't know the answer then I reach out to the departments to get it anybody else have any questions Greg just to kind of 
to extrapolate. Uh, we did 14 people, and it, uh, the tax levy was about 45000 There's uh, some public works employees who are in the stormwater utility, mm -hmm. and so they're not on the levy. So i going from memory, but it was about 48000 just for doing 14 people. Without doing any analysis or whatever, I'm guessing 200,000 to right size. I was going to say, Dave, um, where we were at before, we were talking 256. Okay. So you're probably darn close per year. Yeah. And 200K. 256 is what we were at. So, yeah. Right. And our increase this year was only 186, right? With oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the net new construction was 186,000 about. With that being a banner year. Yep, that was a banner year. Mm -hmm. We've never had that much. And honestly, this was the year that I had to strike to try and get the employees as much as I could yep. this year. Yep. And that 186 carries forward, so that that's our new that's, baseline, right? That's, with our, that? new, new that's baseline. our new baseline, but it won't be as low as 1%. But let's say it's just 1% for next year, mm -hmm. that would give us approximately 60, uh, no, that's even high. Uh, that would give us about 45,000 total. You know, that's a worst case scenario, but yes, that's our new base for subsequent years, but I don't anticipate another 186,000 available. But, so yep. with right sizing, what, I mean, just because we're having this philosophical conversation right now. Yep. What what can we do? Is there anything that we can do besides just plugging it away bit by bit? I think there's a couple Options. things that you could do. Is One option would be, you know, we could change our health care, but we don't want to do that because we know if we do that to save money, we lose our competitiveness, and that's yep. the one thing that I can use to recruit right now. Um, our health plan is not by any means any more cutting edge. We were just in a meeting, Tim and I, today where an employee was talking to us about being on Monona Groves. Um, the, the wife works in the school district, and their out-of-pocket deductibles are a quarter of what ours are. So our, if we start doing any type of plan design changes, any cuts, the one thing that I'm able to hold out there that is still pretty competitive is that health plan. So there are things that you can do within your benefits program to try to stay, to try to make some savings, to make changes, but either way it's negatively affecting that employee. So during the leadership meeting we talked about the ugly R word, which is that referendum word, mm -hmm. you know, identifying what we need, going to referendum. Tim, what was the other option? Well, the other thing that could happen is it, when you close a TIF, that's when your base goes up. So last year we did close a TIF, uh, which helped last year. The next one I don't believe closes till 2026, maybe six or seven. Yeah. And we might extend it for a year, you know, to get that uh, workforce low-income housing incentive. So those are opportunities to do things, and that was one of the reasons why we were able to add positions last year, is because that TIF district closed in a raised our base levy rate. Dave, is there any other thing that you, you talked a little bit with us on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else that you saw as a funding mechanism that we would be able to potentially use? Um, just to kind of extrapolate on the R word. Yeah. Uh, if we were to consider going for referendum for the 24 budget, we'd basically have to start tomorrow because it has to be on the April 23 uh, uh, ballot. So we don't have enough time for the 24 budget. So a referendum would be the 25 budget year at the earliest to be realistic. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, then the other thing you would want to do is you'd want to address the staffing needs as well. And then the other thing that would happen is we would, um, the ERP, we would be going above the levy limit, so then the ERP that we get would go away, so we'd have to ask for that amount of money as well. Yep. Which I forget what that number was. You went, uh, I think it's a couple hundred thousand. 220, right? if I remember correctly. So 
We're limited. It makes it really difficult to even go to referendum. You could do things, you know, like wheel taxes or, that was you know, those types of things. But I've always struggled with that because everybody pays the same amount and those that can least afford it the most are really impacted by that. So I, I personally struggle with that one. But those are options. Some municipalities are doing things like that or combinations of things. Middleton is actually going to a referendum um, in November, so we're kind of keeping our eye on that one. And other municipalities throughout the state will as well. So we can certainly give the council an update on, on how those come out. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to doing a, ref a one time referendum just because, like you said, if <laughs> if our only other option is, you know, waiting for TIF districts to close, I mean, that's, you know, another five years. I, I don't want our employees have to wait another five years to get right size at that point. We're, we're going to be losing people left and right. So. Correct. I think we have to bite the bullet and start looking at that seriously. And um, like you said, you know, figure out what our whole needs are. It's, you know, is I, th I think we just have to do it. It's not what I want to do, but, you know, our, our state legislator has our uh, hands tied, so. Yep, I just want to make sure that the council understands, you know, we are at the breaking point. And, you know, we had to make the decision this year between staffing and um, increases, and we felt we need to invest in our employees. So, to you know, to hear Regina, you as the president, making that comment, uh, I, I can't thank you enough. But we, we need to look at this seriously, and I think 2024, this is what we need to be looking at as a whole and have the council, you know, supporting that. Yeah, so let us know what we can do. Because okay. Because I, I, you know, unless there's somebody that's listening right now that is absolutely opposed to trying to right size our employees and going for a referendum, let's let's start having that conversation. Otherwise, let's start moving forward as quick as possible, even if it is tomorrow. Yep. Thank you. And I guess I'm just going to get on my soapbox a little bit here. I been uh, at a number of local governments. We're all in the same boat. Yep. We've been dealing with these levy limits for a decade now. And when it first started, you could find some low-hanging fruit and take it. That low-hanging fruit is gone. Uh, you know, I might be able to say, okay, I'm not going to be in this association and I'll save $100 a year, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the what I've been telling people is you've heard the expression, doing more with less. I'm all out of less. I have no less anymore. I need more. And it's not that we're trying to be the greedy public servant. We're trying to provide services for people, and we are stretched very thin and have been for a long time. I think the hard, the hard part, just so you can hear it, especially... Um, on the HR side, we're touching every department and trying to recruit people in and make this appealing to them, it's real difficult. And I just lost a lineman that I'd already booked an airline ticket for that, um, you know, those positions are a dime a dozen. And for me to attract someone to come to Stoughton, Wisconsin is very difficult. Went over the border down to ComEd, $58.55 an hour. So I granted that's an extreme, but I can tell you if I have a, a person that's a shelver here in Stoughton versus a shelver in Fitchburg, they're going to be making more money in Fitchburg. So somehow those other communities are figuring it out. Maybe they have more growth. I'm not sure what the situation is. But unfortunately, from my standpoint, that is my competition. Those are my neighboring communities, and we've got to do something to stop losing these employees. I mean, we're making a great effort tonight, but I'm with you, Dave, you know, you can only do so much with less. And so it ends up coming on everybody trying to do more with less. And we're at the end. Well, I mean, I was looking at the budget and there's not really, 
extraneous expenses. I mean, everybody is like bare bones. And so uh, we just have to go the referendum route and uh, try to do what's right for our employees. Otherwise, it, it's it's just going to get worse. Yep. And I, I want it out there that we're going to try to do everything to keep them because mm -hmm. Like you said before, AJ, if we lose people, we end up having to hire them new people that are, you know, don't have the institutional knowledge right. or the the commitment to our city. Mm -hmm. you and have we're paying them more, and it's not fair. I mean, it's we want to keep the people that we have because they've done fantastic work, and you know. And I get frustrated that there's net new construction because, as you said, everybody, as soon as you have net new construction, we need more people. So right. it's a wash yep. in what we actually gain. Yep. Sat in a meeting today with uh, Public Works and uh, just looking at how they're stretched so thin that if we lose one person, one person out of, out of the Public Works Department during the snow season, Brett has to be in a truck. And not that that's a horrible thing, but I think you all understand there needs to be somebody back manning the ship saying this is what's going to happen and dealing with watching the weather and making those critical decisions for snowplow removal. One person and we've got our director out there. And oh. it's just not a way to operate a city of our size. We owe more to our constituents and we owe more to our employees that are putting in those extra hours or taking extra time because we don't have enough people in the seat. And it's, I am extremely, extremely passionate about this and we'll go to the end to do what we can for these employees and get them paid fairly. So I'm stepping off my soapbox, but I think my point is, has been very clear that something needs to be done if you wanna to continue to offer the services that we're currently offering. The next step is either we start reducing services to our constituents and to our city which is not what any of us want to do, but that's your other option. So that's it, Dave. To answer your question on the screen, Fitchburg 4.16% for their net new construction. Yeah. Plus, they, plus they have on top of that, step programs on their employees. So we feel like heroes for giving that 4% to our employees, but we also don't have any steps for them. Right. So that's the other piece that's missing in our formula. So. Thank you for listening. Well, I think we're going to have a fun year ahead. Absolutely. This referendum together. Yeah. And Absolutely. Um, Regina, selling it I... to our community because I think people move here because of the great services yep. and the parks and the roads mm -hmm. and our downtown and the opera house. And I don't think anybody wants any of that to go away. And so growing is not the answer, actually. I think it diminishes sometimes part of our community, um, much to our school's demise. But I think we got to do it smartly, and we have to get our people paid. Yeah. If I could, Regina. So I will get off my soapbox and let <laughs> yeah. other people talk. Regina, could I uh, just make a comment on, on this? Um, I've never been one to support having a referendum. Mm -hmm. It just irks me. You yeah. know. I never, never wanted to. Um, however, given our situation, I think it's, as, as Regina was saying, we, we need to pull out all the stops and we need to look at everything. So um, as one who, uh, who vehemently opposes them, I will uh, support this uh, this uh, motion, you know, to, to to try and move this forward to see what we can f figure out and you know, make it right. Thank you, Greg. Anybody else have any other comments or suggestions? I guess Regina, just you would ask the question: Where do we go from here? I wasn't planning on going through each individual department. You know, I could do it line by line if you want to and you know, talk about the uh, various revenue categories and why they went up or down. I think at this point, 
because we're at the levy limit, if you have to look at the department as a whole, and you know, if you felt, feel that the department is getting a decent amount for what they need to operate, you leave it alone. Um, we can certainly tweak things, but uh, as I said, uh, it's advantageous to us to stay at the levy limit, so adding anything requires some hard decisions. Does anybody want Dave to go through line by line, or are you okay with reading it on your own? Or nope. I'm fine. No, thank you. So, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, and I, anybody so, that's like virtual we, that hasn't fallen asleep because your cameras are off? We have, have we comments? have excellent staff, so I trust my staff. <laughs> so I would just suggest, you know, between now and the next meeting, as we said earlier. Any um, questions or clarifications or suggestions, send them to Dave and myself. If if you decide that you do want to make some changes, I would suggest that you at least have some amendment language ready for the meeting. So you, you know we're not trying to make sausage on the fly. Um, if you could, that would be helpful. We certainly would assist you in in drafting that language if you needed it. Um, I'm guessing you wouldn't, but. Certainly, we're here for you, and you know I think that's pretty much all we have to present then, right? Yep. I'll make uh, a motion. Last time, does anybody have any questions? I guess I would just uh, like to thank all the department heads for all the work that they've done on the departments or on the budget. It's a lot of work on their behalf. They found ways to get it done, and I appreciate all their efforts. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, thank you. And that was a motion to adjourn by Greg. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Brett. All in favor say aye. 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 I don't think anybody's going to vote, so I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Thanks again, Dave and the mayor and all the department heads for all your work on this. and. Let's keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Bye.